Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of YouTube. Hope you're today. Hope you're feeling grand and all is well in your world. Hello there, everybody. Uh, today's vid for YouTube is all about the real All Right Now chord. So, I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I actually did a video many, many moons ago uh, of how to play All Right Now. And, um, God, I don't, I don't, I think that's like early doors YouTube for Dave there. But, I see this song being played so many places and everyone does that chord wrong. Everyone plays your all right now riff wrong. Well, not everyone. I, I, I tell a lie. Paul definitely didn't. But, you know, you know what I mean? Like so many people play it wrong and they also teach it wrong. And the main reason for that is the double track guitar on the album version. Now, if you listen really close to the album version, you can tell there's two different guitars going on. There's one doing the actual chord, and there's one doing this. Because you've got this high A. Uh, by the way, my guitar is tuned down to E flat today to, you know, avoid certain things. Um, but there's two different guitars. There's, like I say, there's, there's one doing the main chord and there's one doing a higher, kind of like, you know, it's still doing an A, but it's doing this, it's getting this high A octave. But if you go to live versions, Paul doesn't do the high A. He isn't playing it. So many people I see play it like this. Like that. And it's like, well, that's, that's not correct. And if you go and watch free live with Paul, you invariably get amazing shots of how he actually played it and what he actually played was this this chord and i'll talk about the other chords in a sec but basically what he's doing and again here's a little clip to show you you can clearly see in this shot here it's cycling past him where his little finger is it's up on the low a the low the low a note on the low e it's not like this it's like that. You can clearly see that. And again, like I say, the reason it gets taught with a high A is because people are going off the album version where, like I say, you can easily hear there's two guitars double tracked. You know, it's not just one guitar on, uh, on the album track. You can hear it's, it's double tracked. And that's why everyone thinks there's this, this, this high A in there and there isn't actually a high A. Uh, it's just that's double tracked you know you could do it if you had two guitarists anyway um so yeah and here's a close-up picture as well so you can see there again of how paul's hand is so what is the chord so andy fraser wrote all right now and the story goes of what i've heard and, and read and seen and, and and heard in interviews that andy initially came up with the the, the progression to try and sound like pete townsend he was trying to like imita imitate pete and he came up with that <laughs> So that was the initial way of playing it. it was just basically like this, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, but Paul, when it came down to it, was like, well, that's not big enough. Because again, there's no bass in the verse. It's just guitar, bass, uh, guitar, drums and vocal in the verse of All Right Now. So he, so he was like, well, I need to make it fatter. I need to make it bigger. So what he did was he plays another A note, another low A, up here on the low low E on the fifth fret. So what you've got there is, I don't know if it's distortion pedal. Um, what you've got, the actual all right now chord, well, first chord is this. So you've got a low A on the, on the low E, another A. So you've got these two low A's, which make it fat. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in a sec. Then you've got, uh, second fret on the uh, on the D, second fret G, second fret B, and that's your right now chord. That's the that's the chord you see Paul playing. That's the that's the chord. And again, Paul knew that if he did it this way, it wouldn't be big enough. It needed to have the like, the extra low A in it to sound full and fat. Without it, it just wasn't quite right. And again, in that footage, you just saw a bit ago, you can clearly see in that picture where his little finger is. So, that's the first chord of all right now. You've got two low A's, and then these, uh, and then the next three, again, another, another A in there as well. So you've got like three A notes. Of 
of all different kind of like different tonalities because the way the low a the uh, a string sounds to the fretted a on the fifth fret sounds totally different this is the open a string this is the fretted a It's got a lot more. It's got. It's a lot more darker tonality, especially on the bridge pickup, which is Paul. Paul is using on that. It's got a, a darker tonality, the fretted one, and it just kind of offsets the open A and just makes it a little bit fatter. Like if I put distortion back on and play it again. Uh, so this is without the fretted low low E A. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> And then if I put that note in, I don't know, I don't know how well that's going to come across on camera, people with you, but hopefully you can kind of hear. It's not like, oh my god, that's such a massive difference, but there is a difference there. Uh, my guitar's not liking it because it's been in standard tuning for like a month or so, and uh, now I'm just dropped it to E flat. And it's very hot. Anyway, there we go. So yeah, so that's the first chord of all right now, is that one. The second chord is this. Again, this little finger never moves. Again, if you go back to that footage you saw at the beginning of the video, you can clearly see Paul never really takes that, that low A, the fretted A, off. He always keeps it on. So the first chord is this one. So little finger on the fifth fret on the low E, open A. And it's, I'll tell you what as well, Boo Tube. This chord is fairly easy to achieve on a Les Paul. On a Strat or a Fender scale, it's a lot harder because the scale length's a lot longer. But on a Les Paul, it's fairly easy. And Paul had fairly smallish hands. Um, and he has his thumb behind the neck when he plays it, uh, I believe. So anyway, or kind of behind the neck kind of semi middle to the top anyway so this is the first chord so yeah again little finger goes on the fifth fret on the low e a string open and then you have your first finger barring the uh, d g and b strings on the second fret so that's the first chord of all right now and again bearing in mind i'm in i'm in e flat for certain reasons um, so it will sound a bit weird here, but that is the first chord. Second chord, you take your middle finger and your ring finger, and your ring finger goes on the fourth fret on the D, and your uh, middle finger goes on the third fret on the uh, B. So that's the next chord. I'm sure somebody could tell us what those chords actually are. I don't know, apart from the A major. So that's that's the first one. Second chord. So it's... Okay, and then that's the first bit. Again, I'm playing it a bit weird for, you know, obvious reason. Then the, the, the third chord is this one. Which is just... Stunning. Ah, oh, people of the tube, it's filth. And again, the whole time you're playing all right now, that little finger does not come off. That low E, the, the A note on the low E. It doesn't come off. It stays there. Paul has gaps between where he takes his hand off, but it immediately goes back. And it can get quite tiring. But that's how Paul played it. And that's, that's how it's played. It isn't this. <laughs> It's that. It's kind of like, you know, you kind of got the A in the right place, it's just on the wrong string. It's not this, it's that. And again, you can you can see him doing it. You know, he never once does this. You never hear that high A note on the live version. It's, it's studio only, because it, again, it's double track guitars. One's doing this, one's doing that. Anyway, so yes, where are we? So first chord, second chord. Uh, third chord then go back to the second chord oh my god it's so when you break it down like that to clean it's so pretty it's so incredibly gorgeous like that let's give you an idea if we put a load of reverb and delay on it all of a sudden check this out Tony! 
total filth, I tells you. Filth off the starboard bow, sir. Anyway, but that's the chord. Um, I don't know if I explained that last one, did I? I'm an idiot. So that last chord, what you've got again is your little finger on the fifth fret on the low E. Then you've got your open A. Then you've got your ring finger on the fourth fret on the uh, D string. Uh, open G. And then your um, middle finger is on the third fret on the B. Ooh. It's like that. And again, that resolve, when you put this finger back down into the A major position, it, the resolve is just insane. <laughs> I could just play that all day and just not get bored. Oh! Mummy! The chords are rather nice. So yeah, again, just to, just to recap. So you got your A. Kind of ruined that. Let me do that again. It's getting painful now. Mm -hmm. And again, when you kick distortion on. And sometimes what Paul would do, he would play a D major chord in uh, in lieu of uh, uh, this one, uh, that one. In 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 kind of like in instead of that one, he'd just play a D major chord. So you go. Like that, but not all the time. It's, it's invariably that, with that little finger never moves. And it did then, Dave, because it just, it gave up. It just went, no, Dave, it hurts. Moving. So anyway, uh, yeah, but that's it. That's the actual all right now chord. So many people teach you like this. And it isn't that. Again, that's the album version. The album version you can clear here. There's two guitars tracked to, uh, like, you know, put together. Um, because there's, it's just certain notes that you can't do. And again, the live footage just steals it. You can see... All the live footage you see of Paul playing all right now, he never once does this chord. You'll never see him do that chord. He plays this chord because, again, in that verse, it's just him, uh, Simon Kirk, and Paul Rogers. Andy Fraser is not playing in the verse. There is no bass. He doesn't come into the chorus. And because of that, Paul knew that guitar part, or just like that, was too small. It just didn't sound big enough. It wasn't fat enough. So he puts the other low A in. And again, because you've got a bit of a different tonality, it's a bit of a darker tonality to that fretted A note than just the open A string, it just makes it bigger, fatter and warmer and just fills the space. And it just sounds immense. And again, that resolve is just insane. And again, Paul used some absolutely stunning chords. You know, there is... You know, he really had some amazingly gorgeous chord progressions. You know, Be My Friend being another one. Uh, I really want to teach Be My Friend. I don't know if I can, again, for obvious reasons. But if this video works, I, I might try and do it in E flat. Because Be My Friend is just one of those insane things. Let me see. Because you got that. But yeah, there you go, people, tube. So I hope that's been somewhat informative because, like I said, I see 
people teaching all right now or playing all right now all the time and they always do it that way and it's not that chord it's that one it's bigger it's rockier it's massive it's more paul and um yeah that's how paul played it and again the album version is double tracked if you listen really closely you can hear there's two different guitar tones. There's the main one doing the big fat riff, and there's a thinner one that sounds to me, and again, I don't know, I don't think we'll ever know, but it sounds to me that one's Marshall, one's Fender. I don't know why I get that impression, but it feels like one is a Marshall, super bass, most probably knowing Paul. Paul didn't like the super leads, he liked, preferred the super basses. Um, and one sounds like a Fender amp cranked. It just has a bit more of a glassy kind of fendery chime. The one that's doing the high, that one, it, that sounds to me more like a Fender amp. But again, I don't know. It could be both Marshalls and he just reset the EQ slightly. I don't know. We'll probably never know. Again, there's no effects. Paul didn't do that. Um, he just plugs straight in and turned it all the way up. So, yeah. just uh, So, I hope that's been, like I say, somewhat informative. Um, also, as well, the All Right Now Les Paul is... Um, is not the famous 59 with the broken headstock. It, it's the, uh, the, the All Right Now Les Paul was Paul's stripped top burst. The one that he played at the R White Festival. Um, there's there's a lot of people who, who I see writing, saying like, you know, the one that's uh, owned and that Gibson cloned is the All Right Now Les Paul. It isn't that Les Paul. Um, the All Right Now Les Paul was Paul's stripped burst that he uses at Yard White, and it's absolutely, it's really heavily used. And, it, and on all fairness, that's my favourite one of his Les Pauls, not only for the looks, but the sound. Uh, I feel the Tobacco Burst Les Paul that Paul had for a while was a really nice guitar, doesn't quite beat the stripped one, and the 59 that everyone knows and Gibson cloned is good, but it ain't as good as the stripped one. So, just bear that, that's another thing as well, people achieve that I, I see all the time, just bear that in mind, that it, again, it isn't that one. It's the stripped Les Paul. That was the one that Paul did all right now. That's the one he had at the time of all right now. Uh, and that's the one he recorded the song and it wasn't a, you know, it was a burst, but it wasn't, the burst, if that makes any sense. Anyway, yeah, so just bear that in mind, people achieve when you, when you play all right now, it ain't that, it's that. Yeah. Paul needed that big to be big, and it is. Paul! Good God. Anyway, I hope this video has been somewhat informative for YouTube. I hope it's kind of like, you know, like I say, it's something I've, I, I, I did teach this a long time ago, but I wanted to revisit that. And again, like I say, this is the proper all right, uh, way to play all right now. That's the way Paul played it, you know, um, and that's the way it should be played in my opinion. So uh, anyway, yeah, for, for what it's worth, there you go. Hope it's uh, hope it's been somewhat informative. Uh, if you like the videos I do on this channel, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Links to that in the description box below. Other than that, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again very soon for another one. Just, just one more time. Just this resolve. Oh, hang on. Fingers in the wrong place. Of oh, that chord. Anyway, I'm going to get emotional if I'm not careful. So anyway, thank you very much, Steve. See you later. Goodbye.